Biden approved cluster munitions supply to Ukraine. So now we've covered this. I covered this when I was at the aggressive progressives at the Young Turks. And the United States was one of the last countries in the world. Not only did we still use cluster bombs, we we manufactured them in the United States. There were good Christians who went to a cluster bomb factory and made cluster bombs and then went to church. (laughs) So... uh, President Biden has approved the provision of U.S. cluster munitions. Now, I'll tell you why they're horrible in a second. For Ukraine, withdraw down of the weapons from Defense Department stocks to Defense Department stock. They are they have stocks of cluster munitions. These are considered a war crime in most of the world. Of course, not to the United States because we're even one dude. So, uh, <laughs> and the move which will bypass U.S. law. So they did actually end up passing a law that prohibited the production of cluster bombs or use of transfer of cluster munitions with a failure rate of more than 1%. So what does this mean? So cluster bombs fail at huge percentages. The accurate is between 10 and 30% of the time they fail, meaning that they're just laying around and then they go off years later and blow up a kid's leg or or kill him. And that's what usually happens. So that's why they cluster munitions actually kill civilians. They don't really are they not really used for military purposes. They end up killing civilians. And so that's what this is about. More than uh so but you know, not all not all bombs grow at the same pace. We need to give failing bombs a chance. I guess that's what this is about. Right? Huh. And by the way, we don't have to follow international laws when we're trying to have a fire sale of old weapons that we didn't get to kill anybody with yet. Don't you know how running a store works? Everything's got to go. Okay. More than 120 countries have joined a convention banning the use of cluster bombs as inhumane and indiscriminate because it's inhumane and it's indiscriminate, in large part because of high failure rates that litter the landscape with unexploded submissions, submunitions that endanger both friendly troops and civilians, often for decades, decades after the end of the conflict. Hey, look, kids, risk is part of life. Am I right? <laughs> And by the way, you're not a real liberal, Max, unless you support the distribution of unexploded bombs everywhere. You don't have to worry. It's not directly affecting you yet. What do you have to say about this, Max? Well, I I am uh, not shocked at all, given that Ukraine has been deploying internationally banned pedal mines while the whole media looked away in the breakaway republic of donetsk in former eastern ukraine this has been well documented and now we have a human rights watch report and this is from human rights watch that is decidedly anti-russia showing that ukraine has actually used cluster munitions in civilian areas that were controlled by the russian military in eastern ukraine like the city of izium back in may 2022 and have killed Ukrainian civilians. Um, So we're told by Jake Sullivan, Jake Sullivan came out and made the announcement at a big press conference. He's the national security director for Biden. I call him Jake Sullivan. He (laughs) said, we got written assurances from Ukraine that they will not use these to harm any civilians. Uh And we believe those written assurances. (laughs) Why would Nazis lie? And he said, it's not like they're going to be using, this is what he actually said. I mean, I'm just barely paraphrasing. They're not going to be using them in the Middle East. They're going to be using them in Ukraine. So why would they shell their own civilians? But they already have, they were doing this to supposedly dislodge the Russian military, but they were willing to dump cluster munitions on a built up urban area called Izium. And here's testimony by one of those civilians who witnessed these attacks to Human Rights Watch, uh, which sent observers in late 2022 to conduct these interviews. Um, This was in the village of Helinska in May 2022. Um, A man heard a cluster munition rocket strike and said, I heard my father screaming, I've been hit, I can't move. I ran back and saw that he'd fallen on his knees and couldn't move from the waist down, and there were many metal pieces in him, including one sticking out of his spine and another one in his chest. 
He had these small metal pellets lodged in his hands and legs. Um, the guy's father received medical treatment and died a month later. But this is just one of many, many casualties caused by the Ukrainian military, especially in the Donetsk and Lugansk republics that tried to break away after the U.S. backed coup in 2014. And we've seen thousands of people die there away from the gaze of the U.S. media. So none of this, what we're going to see is going to be horrifying, but none of it will be shocking to anyone who's been paying attention since 2014. And it will be whitewashed by the American media. Uh, the United States, Ukraine, and Russia, which is alleged to have used cluster bombs extensively in Ukraine, are not parties to the convention. Did you know that? Eight of NATO's 31 members, including the United States, haven't ratified the convention against cluster bombs. Yeah. So... In its, la in its last publicly available estimate more than 20 years ago, the Pentagon assessed that artillery shells shell to have a dud rate of 6%, meaning that at least four of each of the 72 submunitions each shell carries would remain unexploded across an area of approximately 22,500 square meters, or roughly the size of four and a half football fields. So there's going to be four unexploded, for every 72 there are going to be four in every shell. Isn't that something? And that's going to be spread. It gets worse. A 2022 Congressional Research Service report to lawmakers noted significant discrepancies among failure rates estimates of cluster weapons in the U.S. arsenal, with some manufacturers claiming 2 to 5 percent, while mine clearance specialists reports 10 to 30 percent. So we are saying, no, they only fail. So that, that's what makes them dangerous is they don't explode. So if they don't explode 10 to 30 percent of the time, that means 10 to 30 percent of the bombs are there laying around to blow up and kill civilians like Max just read to you from that uh, news report. There is no there is no waiver provision in the one percent limit Congress has placed on cluster munition dud rates. Written. So they have they're breaking the law by doing this. The, the law says you can't sell this munition if it has greater than a 1% fail rate. Well, it does. Right. They're admitting right. that it has, they're admitting it has two to 6% fail rate, but the real number is 10 to 30%. So even their number says it's illegal what they're doing. Isn't that kind of well, stunning? That and how, and no one's going to stand up and do anything, right, Max? Well, it's kind of, it sound, sounds familiar. It kind of reminds me of how the COVID vaccines were tested where there was like literally no control group. And then like the booster was tested without, without any uh, human trials. They can get whatever result they want if they need to uh, pass a certain threshold. And so even the New York Times, also not exactly a pro-Russian publication, has called out these phony Department of Defense numbers, which Jake Scullivan cited in his press conference. So only two to 3%, whereas Russia has a 30% fail rate. It's like our, our, our munitions are so superior to theirs. But the way they tested them was they would dump them like in an open field, which is not how they're actually going to be applied. And according to the New York Times, the fail rate is at least closer to 15%. Um, and you would assume it would be higher if they're dumped in a built up urban area. Maybe they get caught in between buildings or on trees. I mean, who knows where they're actually going to fall, but there are going to be thousands and thousands, well, there possibly millions of unexploded munitions. And again, we've received written assurances from Ukraine's uh, defense minister, Alexei Reznikov, that they will clean up all the munitions, unexploded munitions, once they quote unquote, liberate these areas from the Russians, which may never happen. Uh, and Reznikov, by the way, uh, has referred to the cluster bombs as liberation weapons on his Twitter account. Oh, my God. So the waiver, so the fact that there's a law in the United States saying you can't do this if there's a failure rate of over 1% and there's 2 to 6%, to understand this requires math. And we gave up teaching math in this country in favor of sending munitions to Ukraine. So that's why that's happening. Um, Biden would bypass any any law in Congress, according to a White House official, I mean, and that and that treaty drawing down the munitions from existing defense stocks under a rarely used provision of the Foreign Assistance Act, which allows the president to provide aid regardless of appropriations or arms export restrictions. 
as long as he determines that it's in the vital U.S. national security. So even though there's a law against Joe Biden doing this because it's a war crime, he still gets to do it because he's going to use this Foreign Assistance Act. Sounds very George Bushy of him. Doesn't it sound very George Bushy in him? Hey, maybe Bernie Sanders can come out against government for wasting our tax dollars on bombs that don't work well enough, because that's kind of where he's at now, because he's for this war. This is about working people in this country demanding better explosive products for their hard-earned money. <laughs> While Russia has used cluster munitions far more extensively, Ukraine has also allegedly deployed these weapons during the war. Well, Max just told you all about it. A new HRW report released Thursday said Ukrainian use caused numerous deaths and serious injuries to civilians in attacks in the city of Lizim and other locations in 2022. Ukraine has denied using cluster munitions. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Uh, there's Glenn Greenwald says cluster bombs are banned by a convention signed by more than 100 countries, including many NATO allies, because of their huge civilian toll. Their use has long been seen as a war crime, including by the United States, when used by bad countries. Biden is now sending them to Ukraine. Uh, by the way, on the side note, bad countries is my favorite indie band. <laughs> uh, so if the U.S. provides at least 100, here, listen to this math. So if the U.S. provides at least 100 cluster bombs, 100,000 cluster bombs, and each one has at least four duds, Ukraine will be littered with at least 400,000 unexploded bomblets. Wow. The goal of the, US, of the U.S. role in this war is not to protect Ukraine or Ukrainians. It is to destroy Ukraine at the altar of the broader goal of weakening Russia, as we've done in Syria. These cluster bombs will kill, kill Ukrainian civilians for years to come. We always arrive in a big fire truck, Americans, filled with napalm instead of water. That's what we're doing here again. We fight fire with fire. Who am I kidding? We fight everything with fire. Just like to see it burn because we're the joker. We're the world's terrorists. Anyway, uh, fortunately for Biden, there's no anti-war left in the U.S. Congress to bother him about this. Absolutely none. They're all war pigs, from AOC to Bernie Sanders. There are few leftish commentators otherwise loyal to Democrats who are making some noise about it. But by and large, this will go forward without protest. And as a supporter of Biden's administration's policy, this woman, by the way, is a representative from, I think, uh, St. Paul, Minnesota. She's the only one who's saying anything about it. She's opposing in strong as possible terms my absolute opposition to the U.S. transferring cluster munitions. Yeah. After I supported every other weapon system. That's right. George Galloway tweets out, Princess Di, the people's princess, died in vain. Her successful campaign to ban cluster bombs has been overturned as Biden sends them to Ukraine. Anyone heard from her sons about it? Anybody heard from Elton John? How about that? Let's be clear. Cornell West came out, Max. Did you see this? He says, let's be clear, cluster bombs are crimes against humanity, exclamation point. They disproportionately kill children and innocent people far long after they've dropped. Shame on President Biden for such revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy. Hashtag cluster bombs are war crimes. He's right about that. Good for him. And look at this piece of shit. Vidman on cluster munitions, he says, from a practical standpoint, the president did the right thing. What a piece of shit. From a practical standpoint. From a practical standpoint. From a moral standpoint, I can't really assess that because I'm a complete sociopath. Kidding. He then went on to say, they have footage of me doing terrible things. I was drunk. I thought that it was just a mirror over the bed. <laughs> <laughs> and for those resistors who who still lionize Vidman, peace, he's hammering generations of our kids and other innocent civilians to strike at a geopolitical foe is the right thing to do. What a piece of... Uh, you want to see... Here's Senator Coons. You want to hear what he has to say about it? President Biden said that Ukraine's military is running out of ammunition, yeah. and that was a factor in his decision to greenlight providing cluster munitions. Do you think that morally justified his decision to do this. 
I do. This was a very hard decision. The president really- He does. He listened to all sides. He did does. you speak to him about it? I did not speak directly to him about this decision. I weighed in indirectly through folks in his core team, but bluntly- It's, cer it's certainly the more right thing to do than negotiate a peace deal. That's, that's for sure, right? I mean, he could negotiate, but that would be fascism. Here we go. <laughs> He looked at several different core factors. First, we are running out of 155 artillery munitions, mm -hmm. and they are burning through them at a remarkable rate, six to 8,000 a day. That's a million a year. We have a plan to bring back online the manufacturing of 155 shells wow. at scale, but that won't happen for months. They are at risk of losing this counteroffensive wow. if they run out of their shells. We have a large stockpile of 155 shells that are cluster munitions. Mm -hmm. It's the Ukrainians who are asking to be able yes. to use these on their own soil. Oh, yeah. They've committed to monitoring their use, to remediating them after the war. And frankly, they will be tactically helpful against dug-in Russian troops. We're going to torture people in a nice way. That's to believe me. Believe me. And we're going to use these war crime and cluster bombs. And we're going to monitor them whenever they kill a little kid or an old person or something. We're going to ignore it. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is real. This is, uh, I, I, these are people in suits sitting around. He says it's morally justified, that guy. Apparently the word moral has lost any meaning for the United States. These things are banned in 128 countries. How much lower can you get? Pretty low. Anyway, I, that's good enough. I, I can't do any more of this. This is depressing. Um, but we try to make jokes about cluster bombs. What other show is going to do that? Not many, right? <laughs> well, Max, I want to remind people that you're Liberation gonna, weapons. They are liberation <laughs> weapons. Anything you like to say to, to mop this up? Well, NATO is coming up. NATO's conference is coming up soon in Vilnius, Lithuania. It was supposed to be a victor's summit. They thought the counteroffensive would be triumphing right now and blasting through the Russian lines and hammering towards Crimea. That's not happening. It's looking more and more like final scene of the film downfall the german film about hitler and his crew in the bunker there might even be a few nazis there too uh and the cluster bombs are a sign of the cluster bomb transfers are a sign of desperation this is a desperate war effort now and rather than negotiate they have to escalate at every turn with more and more grisly effects as the negotiating position of NATO and its Ukrainian proxy actually worsens day by day. So where where is the NATO summit? It's in it's in Vilnius. Oh, okay. So is that different than what uh, the Young Turks go to? Remember Anna Kasparian? They go to a weapons summit. That's different, right? Well, this is in uh, this is in the capital of Lithuania, which is what Donald Rumsfeld during the Iraq War referred to as New Europe, because oh. these are the stooge former soviet countries that will go along with any war that the u.s wants and their population is heavily propagandized against russia new laws are being passed to ban the russian language it's it's very different than hosting it even in somewhere like germany where the munich security conference where anna kasparian interviewed madeline uh we think it was worth it albright because yeah. In Germany, there is at least some pushback to this war, and you can actually see the far right party, the Alternative for Deutschland, which is one of the one of only two parties in Germany that's actually resisting the push to continue this war, is now the highest polling party, polling higher than the ruling uh, center left socialist party, polling higher than the Greens, who are also in the coalition. This is the furthest of the far right parties in Germany. So. I mean, we can just see the consequences playing out economically, politically. And so they're hosting NATO in the most, um, you know, the, the, the biggest vassal possible. They're not letting critical press in. Michael Tracy's press credentials were refused. He was uh, he covered NATO last year, but this year they're not letting him in. Um, so there's no point in us trying to get someone in there. But oh, it's not okay. going to be a pretty event for NATO. Uh, I would go if I could get in. But I don't no, think it'd be great if you could be trolling them or just at least asking some basic questions about how much longer this has to go on. You are you are Putin's body. That's what they would have said. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are Putin's body. 
That's what you I was have told. Bad car accidents tomorrow. When, <laughs> when I went to uh, when I went to the Freedom Forum in uh, Oslo, where they where they do the the Peace Prize, which you know is all bullshit yeah. now. That's now I know that Oslo is all full of shit, and that the Peace Prize is also corrupted, and so is any most human rights organizations are all full of shit. They were all corrupted by the war machine because they got money, baby. I don't know why they don't try to buy me because I would I'm for sale. No one makes an offer. No one has made an offer. Okay, uh, <laughs> Max Blumenthal, thanks. We'll see you Friday and Saturday, this Friday and Saturday at Magoobie's Comedy Club in Baltimore. It's actually in Tononium. Timonium? Timonium? I don't know what the name of it. That's yeah, the that's name of the this. racetrack is. Oh, okay. So go out there. We're going to be at Magoobie's. It's a beautiful club with a funny name. It and is. It is. I saw I saw you play there. Yeah, I did. It's great. I was all the way in the back, so I just did this to get better seats. ha, ha, ha. Well, we'll see. We got three shows, one Friday, two Saturdays. So we'll see how popular we are. <laughs> okay, Max. Thanks, buddy. Talk to you later. All right. See you soon. Oh, I have to tell I have to tell everybody, Max Blumenthal, before he leaves, I have to tell you that uh, you know the vaccine is safe and effective, and it will keep you from getting seriously ill or hospitalized. It's the greatest thing ever, and my heart swells with pride over the vaccine, not from the vaccine, but with pride. <laughs> and that's why my heart is swollen. Um, and so the vaccine is great. And if you say it doesn't work, that's a lie. And if you say that, that I'm just, I'm just correcting you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, come see us on tour. We'll be in Baltimore, San Francisco, Huntington Beach, Rosemont, and Chicago, Las Vegas, Salt Lake City, New York City, Pottstown, Pennsylvania, Stamford, Connecticut, and more, and St. Louis. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all our tickets for all our shows.